right, good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're having a good day today. <clears throat> the songs that came through for today's reading for REO Speedwagon, I Can't Fight This Feeling, and Travis Tritt Anymore. So, both songs are about somebody fighting their feelings. Um... The first song is about a friendship that's grown stronger, and the second one is somebody who has been pretending. So, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I think it's time to draw a new virtue memory card. We started these earlier in the week, and as I said, they are very um, thick cards, and they're hard to shuffle. But I'll do the best that I can. Alright, Spirit, can we have a new card, please? May I have a new card, please? That was quick. I got two, actually. I got... Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from God's love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8, 39. And... Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalm 99 9. So somehow 999 factors in, and 839 could also factor in. But we got Psalm 99 9. So nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Okie dokie. So. Now, let's see what Virtue Spirit's working on in this collective. I also just wanted to mention that we're having meteor showers tonight that are going to hopefully be very extraordinary. There's going to be a lot of shooting stars. So, make sure you're um, taking a look at that. If you'll look at the community page, I've provided a link to some live feed just in case the weather is bad where you live and you're unable to see them. Um, it also tells you the best times to see them in your area. And I also provided a link explaining that between now and beyond the end of the year, we're going to have seven planets in retrograde. <laughs> So, that should be interesting, too. It's an optical illusion. They're not really spinning backwards. They just look like they are. But some people say that it has an effect on our lives. And, I, I mean, we know the moon has an effect on our lives. And why wouldn't other astrological events have an effect on our lives? But don't let it run your life. Be careful that you don't let it run your life. And the thought of it isn't what's causing you to have problems. Um, and don't use it as an excuse either for things that you're, you know, you have control over yourself. Um, Mercury will be in retrograde, I think, starting on the 23rd of August. And Mercury, it will affect our communication. Um, we know that it affects our communication. And some things to remember about Mercury Retrograde. Um, you can easily start fights with people, have disagreements with people. Be careful of that. Um, also, it's best to not start any new projects during Mercury Retrograde. Don't make any large life-changing decisions during Mercury Retrograde. Don't make any large purchases during Mercury Retrograde. Like, for instance, if you buy a car during Mercury Retrograde, you may have trouble making the payments on that car for the entire time you have it. So just be careful about those things. The best way to handle Mercury Retrograde is to not think about it too much. But when you do find yourself struggling with, like, communication or having a lot of arguments or having a lot of confusion, take a step back and do an evaluation of self. Start journaling what's going on during your life and how you can change those behaviors. Because even though the stars and the planets have 
an effect on us, we still have the ability to control ourselves. <clears throat> okay, alright. What virtues are you working on, Spirit, in this collect? Gratitude. Gratitude will take you a long way in life. And we've been getting gratitude all week. Being grateful in any situation. And sometimes it's hard, isn't it, to be grateful in some situations. But if we can start making a list of the things we're grateful for, even if it's just the small things. I've said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it until it sticks. When we're grateful, God will bring more to our door. That's how it works. Also, we've been getting patience a lot, which is a Sagittarius vibe. So be grateful and be patient and also content with what we have. And isn't it hard when we don't have much to be content? When we don't have a place to live, when we don't have a paycheck, when we're living paycheck to paycheck, <clears throat> all of these things can affect our ability to be content. They can also affect our ability to be patient and to have gratitude, can't they? It's hard in some situations to be grateful, to be patient, and to be content. So, I'm, I'm just saying... That's what Spirit is, is, is asking us to try to do more of. Be grateful, patient, and to be content with where we are in life. It's, we're not always going to be where we are right now. Life is constantly changing. And so be grateful for that. If nothing else, look back at where you were a year ago or five years ago. And think about how things were then and how things are now. Maybe they were better then. They can be better again. Things are constantly changing. And we have something to do with those changes. The way that we affect life. The way that we approach life. Hold on, please. Sorry for the interruption. But as you all know, if you watch this channel regularly, that is a normal thing to happen during a reading. The phone doesn't ring at all until I sit down here to make a video and then it rings. <laughs> it's insane. Okay, so back to the your, your story here. Alright, what do you want to do next, Spirit? What would you like to do next? I'm hearing sweet tea for the soul. Alright, so what would you say to us out of sweet tea for the soul? We're already being told that nothing can separate us from God's love. And to exalt Him, to worship at His hill... For the Lord, our glory, and our God. For the Lord is holy. Psalm 99.9. May I have a message, please? Back to Egypt. <clears throat> the Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat by pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Exodus 16.3 Okay, let me explain something to you about what's going on here. The, the Israelites were being held captive as slaves in Egypt, and they were being used to build up the city of Egypt, okay? The country of Egypt. They were being used to mix mortar, with straw and mud and they were being made to make bricks and to build huge buildings for the pharaoh to live in for the officers the officials of egypt to live in and it was if they got out of line or they got too old or too um, sick or anything, if they weren't able to work, they were killed, they were beaten, they were mistreated. But they are saying here that the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat by pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted, Exodus sixteen three. God delivered the Israelites from Egypt through Moses. Moses was actually an Israelite, but when the, all the firstborn children, the firstborn male children were killed, his mother, I think her name was Miriam, put him in a basket and floated him down the Nile River 
she had so much faith in God, she believed that if I will put my child in a basket and float him down the river, that he'll have a chance. And so he was actually rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter and was raised to be a king of Egypt although he was an Israelite. And she knew he was an Israelite because his mother had tucked a tassel, a piece of the Israelite tassel. Only Israelites wore those tassels. So she knew when she rescued him that he was not an Egyptian, that he was an Israelite. But she had compassion on him, so she raised him as her own. She wanted a baby so much that she raised Moses, and she named him that because she drew him out of the water. And that's what that means. God bless the brave men and women who teach driving skills to young adults. They truly deserve medals for their valiant efforts, mostly because they save parents from having to sit in the passenger seat fearfully pumping an imaginary brake with one foot. Many a driving teacher has admonished a new driver for constantly looking backward. Don't keep looking back. You're not going that way. Isn't that true of this life as well? When we constantly look back longing for something or somebody or the life we used to have, we are deluding ourselves. We can't live in the past. We can't live in the future either. The only time allotted to us in this life is the moment we are living in right now. Faith check. The Israelites, though miraculously released from 430 years of captivity, actually preferred going back to the life in captivity as slaves of Egypt because they were afraid that the God who parted the seas for them wouldn't provide food for their growing for their growling stomachs they didn't appreciate remember gratitude what they had in the moment sure freedom looked like a desert but god was with them in the desert and god is with you wherever you are wherever you were and where you are going whether your glass is half empty or half full be thankful that there's something in it gratitude being patient, being content with where God has you at this moment. Because the Israelites were murmuring and complaining, and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of their lack of gratitude, because of their lack of patience, and because they're, they were not content with what they had been given. Okay? So Spirit is saying, don't be ungrateful. Be patient. You don't know what I'm up to here. I'm doing something here. Be content because I'm taking you somewhere who you don't know. You don't understand. I have the name Cole. I have the name Roman. And I have the name Philip. Those names could somehow be significant. All right. So we had REO Speedwagon Can't Fight This Feeling and Travis Tritt Anymore. I can't hide the way I feel anymore. Okay, so, Spirit, what direction do you want to go in now? Beautiful. Everything's flowing wonderfully, and I love when that happens. Let's pull some tarot and see what comes out. I'm here to use the red deck. So, we're going to pull tarot. How are you working in this collective, Spirit? Judgment in the world. Judgment in the world. Spirit is showing us the truth about the world, the end, completion. There's something that's over, and we're seeing the truth about it. All right? What's the energy to overcome? For It looks like so far wanting to go back. What's the energy to overcome for this collective? Transformation. Transformation. The energy to overcome is transformation. So there's something that you don't want to change. You would rather things stay the way they used to be. Spirit says, I want you to change this. I want this to be a huge transformation for you. Death is here. We have Libra. We have Taurus. We have Aquarius. We have, um, I think, Leo and Scorpio. 
Scorpio is here twice. Well, let's gonna pull this together. It's a lot of cards. What's well, gonna pull it together, Spirit? <clears throat> There's about to be a wheel. The Hermit is here, the High Priestess is here, and a wheel is here. So something's going to happen that's out of our control, but we're soul searching and we're using our intuition. And there is also going to be a moment of clarity, a tower, or some kind of event that's going to rock your world to the core. Interesting reading so far, Spirit. Alright, show me how this happened. May I see how this happened, please? How did this happen? Using um, the Kipper. May I see how this happened? How did this happen? Spirit's getting just the right card. Woo! A gift. There was a gift. Number 17, which is an 8. We're in the 8th month. Okay, we have 20, we have 21, we have 13, I'm not sure what the hermit is. We have number 2, and we have number 10 it looks like, and number 16. We have false person on the bottom of the deck. So this happened because of a gift. A gift. See the gift? Alright, well what was being hidden or what is being hidden? I'm going to take the one that came out. There's a mature male being hidden. An older man. He came out in reverse, but I'm not going to really worry about reversals. We'll see if it plays a factor. This older man is very distinguished. He is very worldly traveled educated he loves books he loves to learn he may even love to teach others he may have gray hair with gray facial hair thick eyebrows a library full of books there's a mature male being hidden all right what's being shown an imprisonment an imprisonment. Alright, and what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? A family room. The family room is a place in the home that is like the den. It's a place where you take people who are a part of your friend group, your family. It's it's not really a formal place. It's an informal place of your family. So, somebody has a gift or has had a gift. That's how this happened. Because of a gift. What's being hidden is a mature man. What's being shown is, a, is an imprisonment. And for some reason, there's a need for the family room. We have number 17, which is 8, 5, 29, which is 11, and 21, which is 3. All right. Why is gift here? Because of judication. So, this could have been an inheritance. All right. Why is mature man here? Because of a main female... In despair there's a main female who's in despair about this mature man why is imprisonment here candle wax again why is imprisonment here this could be a real imprisonment or it could be um, being stuck somewhere you don't want to be in a miserable place where you're not treated very well. Your imprisonment is here because of your job, your marriage, and your community. So yeah, I think you feel stuck somewhere in a job you hate, in a marriage you're unhappy in, and in a community even that you're not happy in. 
Alright. And what why is family room here? Family room is here because of an official person, the lovers, and a great fortune in reverse. So it's like you're having to have a family room because of an official person telling you about a choice or lovers something somehow the lovers and a great fortune is here in reverse so <clears throat> somebody left you an inheritance it looks like and you're in despair about a mature man this could be your husband and you could be the main female and you feel imprisoned by this marriage. Yeah, this is you being married and having a job. This is the same woman. And you're in despair, maybe about your husband. And then you're going to have a discussion about maybe an official person that you are in love with. And somehow you've lost your great fortune. This person that, you, that you're in despair about, they could have taken money from you and they're in prison now. You may have met them at work. You may have even married this person. They may have tricked you into marrying them or letting them come live with you. Oh, this is a very challenging, unexpected income on the bottom of the deck. Unexpected income. Look. It could be a jawbone of a dog. Alright, or some kind of jawbone. So let's see if we can find out more about how this happened. May I see more about how this happened? Why is gift here with adjudication? Adjudication is when somebody decides, like a judge or a mediator or a therapist. Maybe you were given a gift of somebody to help you with therapy when it came to your marriage. Or maybe you were having premarital counseling before you gave this person an engagement ring. I don't know. How did this happen? You wanted things to be different and it was time for shit to get real. Yeah, I think you were about to ask somebody to marry you. But you wanted things to be different. Or you may have been married and you wanted things to be different. And it was time for shit to get real. You want shit to be different. Change yourself first. It's time for shit to get real. Get honest as fuck. Alright, what's being hidden? <clears throat> Remember, there's a mature male here and a main female who's in despair. You're having to ask yourself, do I really love this person? You're in despair because I think somebody wants to marry you or you're, you're living with somebody and you're like, I don't really like this. I don't want to be in this situation anymore. And it's time for us to get somebody to mediate when it comes to a gift. <clears throat> because I don't even think I love this person. You're in despair because you don't feel like you love this older man. And I think they're older than you. Somebody, One person here is older than the other. Alright, and what's being shown? What's being shown, Spirit? Deal with your drama, handle exes, old hurts, and unresolved shit. And what's going to happen next? Remember the family room, the official person, the lovers, and the great fortune in reverse. <laughs> You're just going to cook a fucking meal. What else is going to happen next? You're going to have people over for dinner, maybe? Somebody's fucked up. You fucked up. And fuck your job. But somehow you may have lost your job. 
You may have fucked up and lost your job. And that's why you've lost your great fortune. An official person. The lovers, which is like about lovers. You have an official person you're in love with. But somehow it's affected your money or something has affected your money. And you're having to tell your family that you fucked up. I fucked up and lost my job. Listen. <clears throat> and just walk away. So you're going to tell them and then just leave. That's what it sounds like to me. Or I, maybe it's like all you ever do is work. And you fucked up. Because you're, you're going to lose me. I don't want to be with you. I don't even think I really love you. And I want shit to be different. I want things to be different. I'm tired of the way things are. I'm sick of it. Sick of it. Sick of it. Alright. What would you say to us out of the energy oracle spirit when it comes to how we need to deal with this situation? What would you say to us? Shuffle, please. Deceit. And a woman holding a heart. Yeah. She doesn't know if she really loves you. Or you don't know if you really love her. The seventh chakra, your crown chakra. Remember using your intuition and it's about deceit. You're realizing that somebody is deceptive. Wow. One more time I'm hearing. Woman holding a coin and deceit. So this woman holds the heart and the money. And there's deceit. Or somebody holds theirs. Alright, what do we need to know? The door to spirit is here in reverse. With the thinking man. Let's see what the... The door to spirit is about a very special place. It's a doorway, an opening to spirit. But for some reason, somebody's not open to being in this doorway. When this card is reversed, you may find yourself feeling an extreme disconnect. It seems your intuition is failing and you can't maintain that peaceful moment that you're longing for. You may be too distracted by worldly matters or personal problems to arrive at and enjoy the deeper sense of your spiritual connection. The paradox is that the more you can let go of the drama, distractions, or intense emotions, the more your spiritual peace will bring you solutions for these issues. So relax and let go. Meditate on your soul self, your higher self that resides in your own heart center. Allow that connection to grow and you'll find that many new doors will open as a result. And then thinking man number 46. <clears throat> He's holding a crystal in his hand. When this card is reversed, it could indicate... What? I thought I turned the page. Sorry. The thinking man in this position could represent a male in authority who is not acting in your best interest. But this card reversed is more about you than about others in your life. This card in this position usually indicates that such a learning and growth are actually a part of your own path and you're not he heeding the call. You may be destined to be a therapist, teacher, writer, publisher, psychic, or healer of some sort. Your soul longs to serve in this capacity, whether professionally or just in your personal life, but something seems to be blocking your way. But it's time to break through and move in the direction of the now. Remember, what you learn during your own growth, you'll be able to share with others, often adding your own compassion and profound personal wisdom. Affirmation. I am willing to learn new things. It is safe and comfortable for me to open up and share. So there's something that's blocking you from your, your uh, relationship with spirit. And that's what we need to find out. And I think that it's because you have a lot going on at home. You're in a relationship that you're unhappy with. It's affecting your money. <clears throat> you hate your job. <laughs> I think you hate your job. I think it's like, I hate this job and I just want to walk away from it. 
Somehow you fucked up. Maybe you chose the wrong person and the wrong job. You might be in a situation where you are miserable. And it's costing you a great fortune. And the great fortune that it's costing you could be your peace of mind. It doesn't have to be money. It could be um, what it is that you're supposed to be doing going through this door to spirit. And there is someone in your life who does not have your best interest at heart. And But the important thing to remember, Spirit is saying, is that this person is in your life to teach you these lessons. So it sounds like a very karmic relationship that you're in. This is somebody you have to deal with. You have to deal with some... It has to do with feeling like a prisoner in your job, in your marriage, and in your community the people that you spend time with. But what you don't see coming is some unexpected income. Alright, I'm curious now what it is that's blocking you. So let's see if we can find out what's blocking you. Higher self, can you talk to us about what might be blocking this person from moving forward? Fear and manifesting. So, it looks like you may have some fear. Your intuition is blocked and you need to manifest. Do you understand what manifesting is? It has a lot to do with the way you think. Your intuition and your happiness. I think you're not sure what would make you happy, but you know what, make, what doesn't make you happy. Higher self. What's blocking our intuition, freedom, and not, you don't have the strength that you need to be free? You're not allowing yourself to be free. And you're impatient also. So what do we need to do to get free? What's, what's the step to take? Transformation. And worry. You're worrying too much. And you need to transform. You need this transformation card that we see here. And also clearing your energy. Take a cleansing bath. Use um, crystals. Use prayer. Um, you can do an egg cleansing. Just clearing your energy. Getting rid of the old stuff that you don't use anymore, need anymore. Clean out your house of clutter. Clean out your soul of clutter. Clean out your thoughts of clutter. The things that are... All we have is today. Anything from the past is not... It's not even... It shouldn't even be a part of what we are or who we are today. Because the past is gone. We can't do anything about it. All we can do is do better. Do different. Uh, if you know you've made mistakes in the past, do different now. Make amends for those mistakes. Apologize for them. Forgive yourself for your mistakes. Forgive others for their mistakes. And be here now. That's how you clear your energy. You get rid of the clutter and you have more space for more. If you get rid of the things like not having... Hold on. Alright, sorry for the interruption. Some other ways of clearing your energy. The best way I have found personally is through balancing my chakras. And you can use crystals and in addition to meditation to do that. And it is showing that you need to open your crown chakra. We did see that somewhere. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Why not let's see. What do we need to do to clear our energy spirit? What do we need to do to clear our energy when it comes to meditation and chakras? May we see, please. What's the biggest thing that needs to be cleared when it comes to our energy? There we go. 
your first chakra, your base chakra, your instinct. I trust that my instincts are correct and I let my natural intuitive feelings guide me forward. I will know what I need to do and how to respond with wisdom to situations that come my way. I have an innate desire to be of service in life. As I tap into this feeling, I will know what service I am called to do. I believe in myself. And that's why you're saying, fuck your job. Because you're saying you fucked up. I think you got into the wrong career path. Or you're not in the right career path. And it's affecting your money. It's affecting your ability to earn money. You're not happy in your job. You're not happy in your marriage. And you're not happy where you're at in your community. And it's causing you to feel imprisoned or there's an imprisonment somehow significant. And then we have your throat chakra, your fifth chakra, expressing my feelings. I allow my emotions to be fully experienced. I acknowledge feelings of grief, anger, or fear. And I make a conscious effort to express my emotions or resolve them within myself so that I can move forward freely. I let the unconditional love experienced in my heart be expressed through my voice and my creativity. I let those close to me know how much I love and care for them. I forgive all those who have done me wrong in the past as well as forgiving myself as I could not have responded in a more evolved way than I was able to at that time. So there you have it. You can't express your feelings. You don't know if you really love them. You want to deal with your drama. You want things to be different. And it's time to get honest. It's time to tell the truth. I don't know if I really love you. And it's time to deal with all of the drama. The fact that I'm not happy in my job, in my marriage, in my community where I'm living. And I feel like a prisoner in my own life. Um... It's like, fuck your job, just walk away, you fucked up, and you're having to cook a fucking meal. So, your higher self says that you don't have the strength to get free from this, and you're worrying too much. You need to change. You need to clear your energy. You need to <clears throat> trust your own intuition when it comes to this first chakra, and also your ability to speak up and tell how you feel so that's how you can clear your energy okay and you're not able to get through the door to spirit because of a man who does not have your best interest at heart possibly wait a minute something's not right here i think i read the wrong thing to you let's start over there this is what i meant to read this card shows a man standing before an archway gazing at a crystal that was not a mistake, though. Some of you are dealing with the reversed of this thinking man, and some of you are dealing with the upright, because I didn't make that mistake by accident. It, nothing happens by accident in a reading. This card shows a man standing before an archway, gazing at a crystal in his hand. He is a thoughtful and reflective man, representing the potential presence of a teacher in your life now, or about to arrive soon. This person may be there to educate you in the finer details of your chosen direction or may be there to assist you in some specific spiritual, mental, or emotional pursuits. The card is telling you to pay attention for this could lead to great strides in personal or professional growth. This man may also be a love interest coming your way or perhaps just a new male friend. Be on the lookout for this guide in this physical world and be open to this information. Learn what you can. A new discipline, technique, course of study, or healing practice could change your life forever. So you are this thinking man or there's a thinking man that's going to arrive in your life. So be on the lookout. Here we go again with the distractions. Hello? Okay, sorry for the distraction. That was actually a man <laughs> that called. And they may be in your life to teach you something. Or you may be that man 
blocked. You're blocked from the door to spirit, though. You're blocked from the door to spirit. And it's because there's something in your life that needs to change. And you're worrying too much. You don't have the strength to be free. For some reason, you're afraid to make these changes. Okay? Alright, so... Now you know how you can clear your energy. So I would definitely work on that. You can also get a, what they call a singing bowl. And it will show you where you might have some blocks. You hear the crackles? Those can be blocks. If you're not sure what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm breathing in and out while those crackles go away. So I'm trying to clear my energy, clear my chakras, and you begin by focusing on, like you say, you're focused on your base chakra. All right, Spirit, I'm going to focus on my base chakra and clear the energy of my base chakra. May I see how my energy is in my base chakra? So not too bad. If you hear a lot of crackles, that means you have some blockages and they need to be cleared. And there are stones that represent each chakra. This is the one that represents the base. And you can put this stone, if you have blockages, you put that stone in your per, on your person or near you. Um, if it's your throat chakra, which is missing for some reason from my collection, I have a different one though that I can use. You put this near or on you and you check to see with the bowl if you want to use the bowl. You don't have to use the bowl, but that's just a way of giving you a tangible way of knowing if there are blocks. But you've been shown that you have blockages in your crown and, or I'm sorry, your base and also your um, throat chakra. So there's something you need to speak up about and we see that you want shit to be different and it's time for things to get real that you have somebody in your life, an older man, or you may be this older man, and you're like, I don't even know if I really love you, and I need to deal with this drama because I feel like a prisoner in my life, in all areas of my life. All right, so you're going to have some unexpected income, though, or you may have already gotten some unexpected income. Fuck your job. Just walk away because you fucked up, and now you're having to cook a fucking meal. I'm going to get all these things up. I'm not sure what this gift is with the adjudication, but somebody will understand. But you're in despair because you don't know if you love this. Um, <clears throat> there's a main female here upright and a mature male in reverse. And you're in despair because you don't know if you really love them. So, let's see. What would you say? What would this... Female. It doesn't have to be a husband. It could be a, a brother, a boss. <laughs> what would you say to this person? What would this main female say to this mature male? What would she say to him? I can't do this. I can't do this. I daydream about a life with you. I can't do this. So... So you're daydreaming about a life with somebody or they are with you. 
they could be daydreaming about a life with you and they may want to give you a gift and marry you and you're like I can't do this all right what would they say to her I feel the sexual tension all right what else I want you back and I need security with will you ever make things right so this feminine is I can't do this and this masculine is saying I feel sexually attracted to you I want you back and I need security and will you ever make things right so they feel like you've done something to them and you need to make things right all right so what would this official person say about the family room what would this official person say about the family room i watch your social media so they're watching your social media why are they watching your social media what are they seeing I don't know how to feel, and I trusted you. Remember, your great fortune is in reverse. So there's an official person that watches your social media. They don't know how to feel, and they trusted you. All right. What would you say to them? That you hide your feelings. I daydream about a life with you. So this official person is the one you daydream about a life with, but you hide your feelings. What are your feelings? I miss seeing you. I admire you. I won't let you down, and I want to start over. So you want to start over with this official person, and they want to start over with you. Oh, card wrong. Death alert. I don't trust you. Remember, I trusted you, but I don't trust you. So, they don't trust you, and I don't want to know. So, you're doing something that, that they don't trust, and they don't want to know. They don't want to hear about it. They, they know it's going on. They don't want to talk about it, and they don't want to hear about it. All right, now, so you're seeing the truth about an ending, something that needs to end. The energy to overcome is this transformation. It's like you're afraid to make the changes that need to be made. And this is a very important aspect of this reading because these changes are what are going to lead you to the door to spirit. And you're going to meet a man or reverse any roles you need to. You're going to meet somebody that's going to help you to learn how to make it through this door to spirit and to have these changes and what's going to pull it together it looks like there's two people here a virgo and a cancer pisces scorpio it could be a pisces but we have scorpio here also and then we have all the fixed signs we have scorpio here twice we have aquarius we have taurus we have leo It looks like there is somebody who is a Virgo and somebody who is a Scorpio or Pisces. Could be Cancer, but I'm seeing Scorpio and Pisces strongly, okay? There's a Virgo and, and I think a Pisces possibly or Scorpio. And one of you is very wise. This is the wise man and this is a very intuitive woman. And there's going to be a wheel, something that's out of your control. And it's leading to a tower moment. It could be something as, as simple as a realization, or it could be something that could turn your life upside down. We're going to pull Tarot and see what we can find out, okay? Alright, so let's see what the Tarot has to say. Why is judgment here? What is it that you're seeing correctly? The Nine of Swords and the Chariot. So it's like, I want to move. I feel like this is a pure nightmare. It's keeping me up at night. It's making me feel this stress, this anxiety. 
Yeah, the Nine of Swords and that death. That's what needs to transform. Is that you're in a Nine of Swords energy. The Nine of Swords is something that is horrible news. It's something that is terrifying. It's something that you worry all the time about. And we see that you worry all the time. All right, why is judgment here? This is what you're seeing the truth about. The Page of Wands and the Three of Cups. It looks like you fight a lot about somebody's <clears throat> partying. Okay? Why is the world here? Somebody parties too much and you're fighting about it. Or you're disappointed and you're fighting with somebody. What's over is the Fool is here. The Nine of Wands is here, the Two of Pentacles is here, and the Six of Wands is here. Okay, so this is what's over. This is what the Judgment card is about. This I, I, You party too much, or you're disappointing me too much, and all we do is fight. Alright, I am ready to start something new. I am ready to trust the unknown. I would rather trust the unknown than to live in the hell that I'm living in. I'd rather walk out with nothing and just move on. Remember, just walk away. I just want out. You could have a little white dog. A little cute dog. Alright. So, the Nine of Wands is also here. The Nine of Wands is somebody who's been carrying a burden for a long time. As much as nine years, you could be carrying this burden. Nine months. And it's like you're looking for the end. And what you're looking for is for balance in your finances. Equality in your relationship. One person here gives way more than the other. See this bicycle she's riding? How that front tire is so big and the back tire is so little. And she's like, I feel like I'm dragging you around behind me. It's affecting my income, my money. Because you don't put in as much as I do. And our checkbook is not balanced. Because one person here is giving more than the other. And things need to be more equal. We need... I'm, I'm in this nine of wands energy. I've been carrying the burden for both of us. And I'm looking to see if things are going to balance out. And there's some kind of recognition here. You're recognizing something. And this could even be public recognition. Like you could have seen something publicly that alerted you to a problem in your relationship. Because this kind of public recognition is not a good kind of public recognition. So let's see what you're recognizing. What did we recognize here? That you have an emperor that's in reverse. You have an asshole. This could be a husband. This could be a father. This could be a grandfather. This is that mature man. He is in reverse. He is a complete asshole. Very controlling, um, savage even. Doesn't give a damn. And you're recognizing this person doesn't give a damn. They don't care that you're carrying everything. They don't care that all you ever do is fight. They don't care that all they ever do is party or disappoint you. Alright, why is death here? Because this is the energy to overcome. The Ace of Wands is here. And the Five of Wands. So, the, the transformation that needs to take place is you need to get passionate again. You've lost your passion because you've been fighting for it for so long. That it's, you have, you've lost your spark, your zest, your creativity. It's been taken from you by so many people in your life who have beaten you down. They've beaten you down and beaten you down and beaten you down. And you're like, but I am creative. 
but I have the ability to be so much more, but nobody sees that. That's the energy to overcome. Fuck what they see. You know who you are. Stand in your power. Alright, so what's going to pull it together is somebody very wise, a sage even, going to the right person that has the right information, that's got wisdom about, about situation. They know shit because they study. They've been through life situations. They have walked. This is you introspectively looking inside of yourself in those dark corners, the places that we don't want to acknowledge, that we want to hide, the things that we want to make excuses for. Well, I could do that if. I could do this if. If it wasn't for that, I could do this. No, you can do this. You can. But you've got to overcome the people in your life that are saying you ain't worth a shit. You never will be. You have to transform that attitude. And you have to rekindle your flame. Alright, why is the hermit here? A lot of your stuff's coming out in reverse. Because of this wheel. The wheel is coming. It's turning slowly. But it's coming. And it has to do with a friend, it looks like. I think I can read these upright. Or a surprise. You're about to have some fast movement in your life. Things are about to move quickly. And there's going to come, a lot's coming at you at once. Eight of Wands. A lot of fast movement. This could be a lot of communication. It could be travel. But somehow, you're going to get, shit's going to start moving for you. And it has something to do maybe with a friend of yours. Let's see if we can find out. Why is the High Priestess here? Because of the lover, Gemini's here. Because of you having a choice. You're going to realize, I have a choice. I have a choice about this. My life can move forward real fast. And Spirit's going to have something happen to move it forward. And it has to do with a friend. This person could be a Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Why is the Wheel of Fortune here? Oh, that card flew out, honey. Because whatever this wheel represents is bringing you the strength that you didn't have over here. Can you clarify the strength? That's a Leo vibe. The world in reverse. This, all of this bullshit, you putting in more effort, you wanting to take a risk to start something new, but having this person in your way telling you constantly that you ain't ever going to amount to shit because you don't give a shit. You just don't care. No, they don't care. They're accusing you of their own shit. And you need to be, your life needs to change in the fact that you need to have a spark again, an inspiration from the universe, a creative idea when it comes to all this fighting. Maybe you fighting your own feelings and feeling like, I can't change. I can't change. There's no way I can change. There's too much that's gone wrong for me to change. But there's a relationship that's ending. And you're, you're going to finally realize, because you're going to clear your energy, and you're going to go within, and you're going to search your soul, and you're going to realize that I need to talk to somebody. I need to talk to a friend of mine, because I need something to change. And I'm realizing now that I have a choice in ending this relationship, and I am strong enough to end it. Why is the tower on the bottom of the deck? Because of there being no hope for a hierophant, a marriage, something that requires a certificate, a contract. You're going to have a tower that means there's no hope anymore for this marriage. 
this imprisonment. You remember the imprisonment that you were in? The marriage you were unhappy in? The job you were unhappy in? Or the lack thereof of the job? And the community you were living in where you were so unhappy? The tower is going to be... There's no hope. There's no hope for that. There's no hope. It's causing me to feel in prison. So what will happen here? What will be the outcome? The chariot is here. Death in reverse and the nine of swords. Whoa. So you have this need to overcome. To dig deep. Taurus is here. Taurus is here. Aquarius is here. You have the need to overcome this. The death. The death card is here but in reverse. So it's like you have to overcome the feeling like nothing can change. And like you just have to live in this nightmare. That this is how this is your what you're destined to do. It's like you know you're mm -hmm. not destined to do that. You have the ability to move fa past this, but you still. It's like you've been in this for so long that you're stuck there. You're stuck there. And I told you what you have to do to get unstuck. You're tired of fighting. You're tired of this. You have to clear your energy. You have to clear your chakras. You have to have a spiritual rebirth. Ending or new beginnings. And you've got to have an ending. The ending is how spirit is working. Spirit is bringing the ending and showing you that you need it. And even bringing something to, to give you the strength when it comes to not ending it. Because I don't think you're going to end it. I think something's going to end it. But I don't think it's going to be you. Can you show me what might end it? Hmm. There's the end. The memories that you have are what's going to end it. Something's going to happen. Recent, A recent memory. Clarify the recent memory. Actually, this is more of an, an uh, it's a card of codependency is what it is. And you not standing up for yourself, feeling like you have to say yes all the time to whatever this person wants. You're going to finally have the strength to stop doing that. Clarify the Ten of Wands. The truth is about to come out about you. You're a queen of cups. You're a cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. You're a, you're, you're a Pisces or a Scorpio is what you are. And you are seeing something about this situation when it comes to this codependency and being strong from a different perspective. You're seeing the truth about how loving you are, how much love you have. Somebody's been telling you that you're, that you're hateful, that you don't have the ability to love, that you are a miserable bitch, basically. And you stopped looking for opportunities to do anything else because this person convinced you that this is all you had. This is all you could do. But the truth is about to come out. Clarify that truth. Hmm. That you can move to something else. You can get over this and move on. Not only that, but your wishes can come true when you move on. What are you seeing from a different perspective? What, I mean, you're stuck. That you need to break up with this person. You need to end it. Because this person has done nothing but cause you hurt. Heartache. Pain. The Five of Cups is a card of, I need healing. I'm in a lot of pain. 
I've had a lot of losses. Loss after loss. It shows a man sitting in a bar drinking himself into a stupor. So he doesn't have to feel the pain that he's been through. You may use something to escape. Alright, now, I think we see all that we need to see about this. It looks like you have a horrible, horrible marriage. You're not happy in your job or your lack of a job. And you're not happy with your friends either. Your, your peer group is not a good influence in your life or the place, your community, the place where you live, it's not healthy for you in some way. Alright, so, let's see what we can do to change this. What can we do to change this? What needs to be done to change this? person who feels like they're stuck here and I, I sense that it could be either the feminine or the masculine but whoever it is that feels imprisoned by their circumstances and beaten down to the point where they don't think they can do any better anymore they feel like this is where they're going to be for the rest of their days and that they're going to die miserable that's what I see here what can they do to change this You know the truth and that's all that matters. So somebody's been lying. And you know that. You do you no matter what that is. No matter how tempting, do not look at their social media. And divine feminines don't grovel. What else can we do here to change this? The sky is the limit when it comes to your dreams. There's no turning back, so keep moving forward. And give yourself the stamp of approval instead of seeking it from others. Because they're not giving it to you. And a true friend will support you on your journey to self-discovery. Alright. Now, let's see what we, what we may need to surrender in order to make this transformation possible. Surrender your fear of intimacy and your procrastination. You're afraid to get close to people, and I can see why. Because the people you are close to treat you horribly. Surrender to trust. Remember, I don't trust you. You have trust issues when you procrastinate. I'd have trust issues too because people screw you over every chance they get. What Surrender to what is and surrender to trust. You've got to learn to trust spirit if nothing else and yourself. You don't trust yourself either. Alright, for some reason I only have one shoe on. That might be significant somehow. Alright, and I don't even know where it went. There it is. Alright, what do we need to surrender here? Surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and ecstasy there. So maybe you don't get outside enough. And surrender to divine timing. Sometimes divine timing may differ from your ego's timing. If a goal isn't manifesting fast enough according to your ego, be patient. Remember patience? And trust the universal flow. All right, one more time. Procrastination came out. Surrender to your intuition and let go of the outdated beliefs about yourself. Those old tapes that keep playing telling you you're not enough, you're not good enough. You know, things are never going to be okay again. It's just bad, bad, bad. No, 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 it's not. And stop being so afraid of intimacy. You're afraid of intimacy because getting close to people has caused you pain. One more time I'm hearing. Surrender to your creativity. And there's that spark we saw that you need to have rekindled because people have been telling you, oh, you're not good enough. You're not this. You're not that. No, 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 no. They 
fight with you constantly. No, you have creativity. Surrender to it. And get some more rest and sleep. You're exhausted. You're up all night constantly worrying. You have to get some sleep. You have to. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see what... What would your best friend say about all of this? Surely they have something to say. What would your best friend say to you? Cry over spilled milk and don't be afraid to start over. Cry over spilled milk and don't be afraid to start over. Alright, let's see what the Instant Magic Oracle would say to you. Instant Magic Oracle, what would you say? Beware of outside opinions on this occasion. Keep your ideas and plans to yourself. Validation for these ideas lies within. So don't tell anybody what you got your ideas about. Keep that to yourself. Alright, now, let's see how you can love who you are. Because I'm sure you're struggling with loving who you are. How can we love who we are, Spirit? The dragonfly is here. Trust your wings. Embrace what is. And tend the fragile. Tend the fragile with... Bring your monster flowers... Remember your fear. Number two, trust your wings. Do you remember who you were before the world told you who you should be? Endeavor to remember, for that person has all the natural resources to be the mistress of her own power and the sovereign of her own life. You were taught to trust others in authority, Facts, science, opinions of loved ones or admired ones, but often that leads to confusion or discomfort, for only you know what is best for you. Listen to good counsel, but dismiss whatever does not resonate with your soul. Now is the moment to trust the wings of your inner guidance. They will carry you far beyond all wild imaginings. And number 13, embrace what is. It may seem counterintuitive, but everything is happening for you, not to you. Trust this. When we see the world, and particularly our own circumstances through this lens, our minds expand to take in the possibilities. On the other hand, when we resist or despise our reality, our minds shrink into judgment and we go into protective mode, which diminishes our creativity and vitality. This is the moment you are being asked to love what is unfolding in your life as if you chose it because on some level you did. It's a friend in disguise. Endeavor to welcome it so you can discover what it came to teach you. And then tend to the fragile, number 27. Tend to the fragile. Love keeps us close to the ground where we can feel the pulse of what needs tenderness, nurture, aid. When the world gets too loud, go into the wild silence of nature. Put your ear down to your soul and listen hard. What kind of grounding will nourish you and restore your wings? For when we tend to the delicate longings of our soul, we draw close to the love that we truly are. And then number 18... Bring your monster flowers. Says this. Whatever causes you to stay in fear is a monster. Could be uncertainty, overwhelm, conflict, new beginnings, risk, other people's approval, or unknown. As long as you remain in fear, the monster has the power. But you become the master when you're able to claim the power back. Befriend uncertainty. Shake hands with the unknown. Give new beginnings a hug. Whatever shape the big scary thing takes, bring that monster some flowers. Make an offering. Now is the time to know that on a soul level, 
You are bigger than any circumstance you will face. And we see that you have a lot of fear. Let's see what's going on with your money. May I see what's going on with the money here in my friend's life? Uh, whoever, whoever we are, including myself. What's going on with our money? There was something going on with money here. Odd jobs and options. You remember you felt like you were in the wrong career. And you were like, fuck your job. Workaholic, <clears throat> workaholic and odd jobs. So are trying to close. So you're working odd jobs, but you work too much. Partnership and odd jobs. Is there something playing? I hear something. All right, show me what's going on with our money here, spirit. Mm -hmm. Alright, workaholic came out. The office is here. A laborer is here. Happiness is here. And a rescuer is here. Alright. Why is workaholic here? Because somebody's a perfectionist. Alright. Why is the office here? Why is the office here? Because of a mechanic. Alright. Why is laborer here? Because of science and making an investment. And why is happiness here? Because of leaving a legacy. And why is rescuer here? Because of your emotions. Having a windfall. Being persistent. Managing your money. Making mistakes, having setbacks in your real estate. So, you're emotional about a windfall. It's like you want to have this windfall, but you're being persistent in managing your money because you've made mistakes that caused you setbacks and it has to do with your real estate. What's going to be the outcome of the windfall? Oh my God. Caution. Your solitude. Luck. Having a loss and settling. Caution. Solitude. You're going to have luck and loss and settling. Why is loss and settling and caution here? Because it's a video. Because in the past you've been a Phoenix rising. Your life purpose is here. You were an artist. It had to do with beauty. You were self made and now you're at a crossroads. And what's gonna be the outcome of the crossroads? You're gonna have a shift, a promoter. Somebody unreliable when it comes to social media and transportation. There's going to be a shift in your promoter. They're unreliable. Your social media is here and your transportation. What should you do about this unreliable? You're going to have an idea, an inspiration. And what will be the outcome of that? Spell work that's going to take you to the next level. You're going to be manifesting in silence. Don't talk about it. Your soul tribe is here. If somebody's helping you, it looks like, to go to the next level by using spell work. But we can't talk about it. So I'm not even going to ask what the outcome will be because I've been told not to talk about it. Alrighty then, let's see how the angels are helping you. Angels, how are you helping this person? Helping them to surrender, awaken, have this partnership, have prosperity. You're going to have knowledge and you're going to feel the vibes. 
anything else, you're going to have that freedom, finally. You're going to have thoughts of how to have that freedom from a guardian angel, and they're going to also bring harmony to your life with love on the bottom of the deck, cutting at forgiveness. All right, let's just real quickly talk about what may have happened there. What happened here? You're, you're haunted by something. You're taking it slow and you're focusing on yourself. All right, what's being hidden? That you want to be alone. And what's being shown? That you're being divinely guided. All right, what's going to happen next? Somebody's a player. They're going to stop leading a double life because you got away. Why are you haunted? Because of not being able to move on in the past. Something happened in the past that made you not be able to move on. And what's going to happen next is there's going to be a player who's going to stop leading a double life because you got away. Why, why are they divinely guided? Divinely guided for what? To be pretending and self-pleasing. What are they pretending about? That they have control and that you're going to go first? You first. I'm not making a move. You know where to find me. And I'm trying to control this so it doesn't control me. So they're being divinely guided to pretend to self-please and to try and control the situation. <laughs> that sounds like a conflict to me. What's the true spirit? That it's only you, but it's not the right time and this person is worried. And why do they want to be alone? Because of having flings and having a new love. Why is there new love in reverse? Because of them making silent moves, shutting down, and having a commitment. And what are you going to do since you got away? You're going to have a strategy because somebody can't be trusted. You're a secret love. Somebody's on the verge of telling you how they feel and they regret this. They're overthinking also. Hmm. Can they be trusted? Don't force it. What do you mean don't force it? Somebody can't, they're up late at night thinking about this decision and the fact that they can't move on. So, they lost you. They have a dying love also. They're making silent moves to shut down a commitment because they want to be alone. Because they don't have, they don't want to have flings anymore because they lost you. They were being a player. They were living a double life and you got away. So what's happening with your life now? There's going to be an apology, a reconciliation because somebody's missing you and enough is enough. Alright, uh, talk to me out of this deck, Spirit. What's going on? You need to have acceptance that there's an addiction. Alright, what else? There's new love. Talk to me about the new love. What's going to happen with the new love? Somebody's going to make a decision because of obstacles that they're going to retreat. Alright. What's going to happen with the addiction? Here and now, they're gonna, there's going to be an awakening. What do you mean, awakening? It's fate. This person's about to learn a spiritual lesson. They're going to have healing. And there's going to be forgiveness. Why are you going to retreat from the new love? Because of marriage. That's the obstacle. You're longing. 
So what's going to happen instead? You're going to be vulnerable and there's going to be an apology. Somebody's going to open up and apologize. Why are they apologizing? Because of a warning. What do you mean warning? It has to do with longing. What do you mean somebody's in denial? What are they in denial about? Support, being patient, and this being fate. What's the truth? That somebody needs to take a leap of faith. It's a friendship. It's going to lead to abundance and balance. And mastering a spiritual lesson. Can you give me anything else about that? It's true love. There's stability. You have to wait. Put away the computer. Why do they have to wait? Because right now you have to practice self-care. And there's a twin flame. Alrighty then. Let me get you one more thing and then we'll close. I know it's getting excessively long. But damn it's been a good reading. This has been one of the best readings I've seen in a while. There we go. Be there for you. You need to be there for you right now. And your medicine wisdom is here. I think we've been getting this for you all the time. Number four, be there for you. It's time to let yourself off the hook. Don't interpret the behavior of other people or circumstances outside of your control to indicate something negative about you. Forgive yourself for anything you feel you've done wrong. You can learn from your choices more easily if you stop punishing yourself when you feel that you've made a mistake. Even the decisions we regret can help us grow wiser when we swap judgment for compassion. Sometimes we can only learn what we need to know from what doesn't work out so well at the time. Forgive yourself, have your own back, and be good to you. Number 28, Medicine Woman. Medicine Wisdom. The Earth Mother agrees to support your wants and needs to help you live your best life and fulfill your dreams. Her generosity and her power to assist you is beyond what you can imagine. She is already leading you towards your sacred life purpose, providing exactly what is needed for your soul to blossom, just as she creates what is needed for the flowers of the earth to bloom. This is confirmation that you are on your sacred path. It may take some twist and turn, but you are headed in the right direction, and you are being supported in all ways to gain all the experience and blessings that are meant for you. All right, who are you talking to, Spirit? G-M-K-A-H-P-C, number five. Q-D-L-K-J-H-H-7. F-B-P-M-G-K-T-5. O Y I M V T O five S Z P E H S C four L G N B M F E twelve one more time H B F U E C M ten Seems like we keep getting the same numbers, the letters rather. Trinkets, please, from this bowl. All right, I have two Chinese things. One of them says, "Consider your impressions and follow them once in a while," and the other one says, "Romance could divert your attention away from money matters today." A star that says, "Dream." A fish could be a Pisces, bonefish. A music note, baby feet. Somebody's going to have a baby. A ball, crescent moon with a heart. A shell, your name could be shell. I have skulls. I have an S. An S. I have a hanged man. I have a sunflower.
Dollar Antique Perfume Bottle An Elephant A Skeleton Key A Heart with a Cross in it A J A Star And a skull Oh, a B for something legal Or some kind of reason for a B A B, they sting you They sting you Alright I think it's from this one. I have a piece of crystal. I have a cactus. I have a tramp stamp. I have the world and a skeleton hand holding on to the world. An Eiffel Tower. A squid or an octopus. Believe in love. A family's love is forever. A cross. An arrow for Sagittarius, young and strong, an infinity sign, and always remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you know. All right, I hope you have the most wonderful day ever, and I'll be back soon with another reading. Comment, let me know what's going on with you. Just say hi or whatever you want to say. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and please share the content. That's the best way you can help me as a participant with me, a co-creator with me on this channel is to share the content. And make sure you're setting your intentions for that new moon we have coming up on the 16th, I believe. And... We also have Mercury Retrograde on the 23rd, and we have seven planets between now and the end of the year that are going to be in retrograde at the same time. And tonight, we're going to have a spectacular meteor shower. Check out the community page for a link, just in case it's cloudy where you live or you're not able to get outside. I love you guys, and I wish you nothing but the best. Bye-bye.